Good evening, children. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening, children. You were supposed to complete all these uh, seven questions as homework. Who's finished? Did anyone uh, have the time to complete uh, these seven questions as homework? Else we'll do it now in the class. Has anyone completed? Ma'am, I have not done, ma'am. Yesterday I had more. Okay. Harini, Sneha have not done. Rajeshwari? Ma'am, no, ma I didn't know how to work uh, four, six, and seven, ma'am. So, except that I have completed. Very good, very good. Okay. Okay. So, Ram, Ram, Sashmin, and Tarun? Ma'am, I have completed uh, five, ma'am. Five, huh? You finished five, is it, Ram? Ma'am, yes. Okay, five. Okay, Sashmin and Tarun? Ma'am, five, some, some, ma'am. Really? Very good. Sashmin? one thing I would like to you know uh, tell the class here is that no child is neglected in the class you can see that Sashmin has never responded so far still I ask I call out her name every time however you treat me you know I treat all of you equally I've never got response from you ma'am I have also not completed okay okay Sashmin uh, kindly fix your, uh, you know, mic issues because you need to communicate. How will you get your doubts clarified? If you cannot, you know, use your mic, you cannot text every time, no, to ask for doubt. Please fix your mic. All right, children. So let's see the answer. Uh, the first one, find the area of, okay, let me. Thank you to this. Yeah, see here. Find the area of a quadrant whose perimeter is 25 centimeters. Yes, those of finished can share your answer. Quickly, no wasting time 80, here. 38.5 centimeter. Louder, Raja Rajeshwari. 38.5 centimeter. 38.5. Yeah, then. Any other answer or all of you have got the same thing? Same thing. Sorry? Same answer. Same answer. Okay. Tarun, you said you finished five. Got the same answer? 38.5 only, ma'am. Okay, very good. Let me see what I've got. Even I have got 38.5. Very good. Okay, so this is how the answer goes. Find the area of a quadrant whose perimeter is 25 centimeters. So this is the quadrant. You can see the quadrant here. Okay, so the angle in a quadrant is 90 degrees. A quadrant is a quarter circle. A quadrant is a quarter circle. This one is a quadrant. Okay, the angle is 90 degrees. The perimeter is 25 centimeters. So how do you, you know, split up the perimeter? Uh, so I have called the quadrant AOB. So AO is the radius R units, OB is the radius R units, and the arc, the length of the arc AB, the length of the full thing is 2 pi R. The length of the full thing is 2 pi R. So this is one fourth of it, one fourth of it. So by four, by four. See the full length is 2 pi R, this full length is 2 pi R. And from here to here is one quarter, this arc. One quarter it is. So 2 pi r by 4. So what do you get? 2 ones are 2 twos are pi r by 2. This length alone is pi r by 2. This length alone is pi r by 2. This is r. This is r. So perimeter of the quadrant is 25 centimeters. That means OA plus OB plus length of r KB. Length of r. This is how you present it. OA plus OB plus the length of the r KB is equal to 25. That is what is perimeter. Perimeter is the, uh, you know, the length of the boundary of the closed figure. So now R plus R plus, I've written 2 pi R by 4 for you here. This is actually pi R by 2. So I've written 2 pi R by 4 is equal to 25. Next step, 2 R. R plus R is 2 R plus pi R by 2 on canfing is equal to 25. So please work this and find the value of R. 
Please work this and find the value of R. 22 by 7 into R by 2. LCM and all that. R is 7. So the radius of the quadrant or the radius of the circle is 7. Now find the area of the quadrant. So area of the circle is pi R square. Quadrant will be 1 fourth of pi R square. Square units. Okay, so you can put a bracket here and you can write square units here. So 38.5, very good. Those who've got the answer but not presented like this can learn it from this. Please present it like this. Okay, uh, those who've not done this, take a picture and complete it. Done? Yeah, done. Yeah, what's the answer for this one, children? From 4,375. Four, uh, tell me the uh, digits. 4375. Others have done it. What's the answer? 4375. Others? Rajarajeshwari, Tarun. Same answer. I'm 4,375. Same answer. Very good. Same answer. Very good. All right. Now, the sum, I don't know. Sometimes children find it difficult, you know. So I've told you use this formula. Use this formula. Uh, so it is the distance covered, distance covered in one revolution into number of revolutions is equal to the total distance covered. Is equal to the total distance covered. Very logical, no? Distance covered in one revolution into number of revolutions is equal to the total distance covered. So what is the distance covered in one revolution? 2 pi r, circumference 2 pi r into the number of revolutions. That's what you have to find. Find the number of revolutions. That's what you should find. Is equal to the total distance. Is equal to the total distance. Okay, I'll show you the answer on the next slide. I'm just explaining now. Okay, so now this is uh, how do you find the distance speed into time? What is this? Speed is equal to distance by time. So distance is equal to speed into time. Distance is equal to speed into time. Okay, so you can find all this separately. That will be more, uh, you know, uh, easy to correct. In one line also you can do anything is fine. I don't know what I've done. Okay, I've done it separately. Okay, anything is fine, children. So these are the three different parts, you know. Distance covered in one revolution is one part. Number of revolutions, total distance covered. This is what we'll have to find. So let's, uh, you have to find this. So for that, we need to have the value of uh, the distance. Distance covered in one revolution is equal to 2 pi r. So that is 2 into 22 by 7 into r. What is r? Diameter is 80. So radius is 40. So whatever answer you get for this. And then uh, you need to find the total distance. Distance is equal to speed into time. What is the speed? 66 kilometers per hour. Into time is 10 minutes. Time is 10 minutes, children. Uh, distance is, sorry, speed is in kilometer per hour. But time is in minutes. No, you need to convert time to also to hour. So 10 by 60. See, 66 kilometers per hour. That means the distance is in kilometers and the time is in hours. But the time is given in minutes here, 10 minutes. Please disable your mic. Tarun Murali. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, speed is in kilometers per hour. Speed is in kilometers per hour. But uh, the time is in minutes. You need to convert minutes to hours. So divide by 60. Okay, so this answer you will get in what unit, children? What will be the unit for this answer? What will be the unit for this answer? What will be the unit for this answer? Children, what will be the unit for this answer, children? Kilometer. Kilometer. 
kilometer. The unit will be kilometer because the speed is in kilometer per hour. So the distance will be in. I just told you, 66 kilometer per hour is the speed. That means distance is in kilometer and the time is in hours. Time is in hours. I just told you. So time we have substituted in hours. 10 by 60. The distance which you get will be in kilometer, but no, it should not be in kilometer because here we have got uh, the distance in one revolution in centimeter because uh, the radius is 40 centimeter, 40 centimeter. So here we have the distance covered in one revolution in centimeter. So this also should be converted to centimeter. Is that understood? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's all. Just substitute these values in the formula and get the final answer. So what are the uh, what is that which is given in the question? Find the number of revolutions. So this we have to find. So this number of revolutions we will have to find made by the wheels of a car of diameter 80 centimeters. That means the radius is 40 in 10 minutes. Time is 10 minutes or 10 by 60 hours. Speed is 66 kilometers per hour. Speed is given. 4375 perfect. So first I've written the formula circumference of the wheel. This is the number of uh, this is the distance covered in one revolution distance covered. In one revolution. OK, into number of revolutions is equal to the total distance covered. I first written the formula and then I found 2 pi r in centimeter total distance. You get 11 kilometers, which is nothing but uh, so many centimeters. Then substitute in the formula. Circumference, uh, circumference of the wheel into number of revolutions is equal to the total distance covered. Substitute in the formula. Yeah, 4375. It's a very, very simple question. Got it, children? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'll just clear the slide, take a picture, all of you. Not all of you, those who have not completed. So you should be very careful uh, with the units. Uh, here the circumference. How do we know that the circumference is in, uh, you know, uh, centimeter? Because the diameter was 80 centimeters and the radius is 40 centimeters. So this answer will be in centimeter. Now the speed is 66 kilometers per hour. And the time should be substituted in hours, but it's 10 minutes. So divide by 60, 10 by 60 hours. Total distance, so that will be in kilometers, 11 kilometers. But here this is in centimeter, so you convert this also to centimeter. Always convert the larger unit to the smaller unit. This is uh, centimeter is smaller than kilometer. So convert kilometer to centimeter. Convert the larger unit to the smaller unit. Mm -hmm. A big unit. One second, let me just finish. Kilometer to centimeter. Yeah, now substitute in the formula. This is the formula. Substitute and get the answer. Ah, yes. Yes, somebody wanted to ask something. Yes, ma'am. I converted everything into meters because uh, it's easier for me. Uh, speed into meter per second, 10 minutes oh. into seconds. Yeah, that's fine. You'll get the same answer. That's fine. Yeah, yes. we'll do that. Yeah. So you convert it to meters, right? So that means uh, 1760 by uh, 7. You got uh, 1760 by 700 meters, right? 17.6 uh, by 7. OK, after simplifying, all right, yeah. OK, and this one, uh, 11 kilometers to meters, so. 11 one, one meters, all right, yeah, that's fine. Any unit, OK, so let me put it like this. Any unit, so circumference, basically this one and this one should be in the same unit. They can be both in kilometers, both in meters, both in centimeters, any unit, but it should be the same unit. All right, whatever uh, unit, uh, you know, uh, common unit you take, the answer will be the same for all, 4375. Yeah, those who want it, uh, take a picture. Yeah. Find the area. 
of the face of the clock swept by the minute hand 12 centimeters long in 35 minutes okay so now the clock the clock may be of any shape the clock may be of any shape so say you have a triangular clock in your house the clock is triangular okay the clock in your house is triangular but remember that the needles you know they are pivoted at a point here the three needles or two needles okay the hands when i say needles i'm talking about the hands of the clock the hands or we have the uh, seconds hand or we have the uh, minutes hand and we have the hour hand three hands okay now these three hands are pivoted at a point a, a central point here the three hands the longest mostly the second hand is the longest hand uh, the uh, minute the hour hand is the shortest and this minute hand is somewhere between the long and short hand the length but if the question talks on listen carefully but if the question is talking only about the minute and the hour hand then the hour hand is the short the hour hand is uh, short and the minute hand is the long hand if they say the long and the short hands of the clock, the long and the short hands of the clock. So when they're talking only about two things, they are referring to the minute hand as the long hand and the hour hand as the short hand. So we have three hands. A clock has three hands, the seconds hand, minute hand and the hour hand. Normally the seconds hand is the longest. So all of you are looking at the clock, uh, you know, on the wall in your house. So you can notice that the second hand is the longest. Then in the descending order, it is the uh, second hand, minute, and then the hour hand. But if, if the question, you know, talks only about two hands of the clock, and it says the long and the short hands, the long and the short hands of a clock, then that means the minute hand, they're not talking about the second hand. They are not talking about the second hand, the minute hand and the uh, hour hand. The hour hand is a short hand and the uh, minute hand is the long hand. Am I clear? Okay. Now, these three hands are pivoted at a point. Okay, and so when, when something is tied or pivoted here, their motion, when they go about that point, that central point, they have to make a circular motion. Because the clock is triangular, the hands will not sweep a triangle. Because the clock is triangular, the hands, the three hands of the clock will not sweep a triangle. They'll not sweep a triangular face. They'll always, irrespective of the shape of the clock, irrespective of the shape of the clock, the three hands are fixed at a central point. So when they move around that point, they'll always trace a circle. They'll always sweep a circle. Uh, and these, uh, these three will be three concentric circles because they have different uh, radii, right? The lengths, the lengths of the three hands are different. They have the same center, but three different, uh, you know, uh, radius. See now, many questions will come to your mind. If if I'm not confusing you, uh, sometimes you know the the second hand will be a little longer than lo longer than from the center. See, like it will be like from here. So now such questions cannot be answered. Okay, so we are we are just ignoring this length. We are just ignoring this length. Yeah, so don't get any more uh, questions in your mind. Just understand this. Uh, the three different hands will have three different lengths, which means three different radii. So they'll be uh, tracing three independent circles. And these three circles will be concentric circles. These three circles will be three concentric circles because they have the same center but different radii. Is it uh, okay so far? Yes, okay. Now uh, the question is to find uh, the uh, you know the area of the face of the clock swept by the minute hand 
12 centimeters long in 35 minutes. So you know it will sweep a sector. Now let me just draw the face of a clock like this. And this is the minute hand, okay, minute hand. Uh, forget the R and the second hand. I'm not, we're not uh, talking about that. Say the minute hand, okay, is it? Uh... <laughs> Let me show the R hand also one minute. Okay, so say the time is uh, three, five. Three, five. Okay, now 35 minutes past three, five will be uh, 340. 340. So here, like this, 340. So this is the, this is the sector. Ignoring uh, the R hand, ignoring this. This is the sector. This is the sector traced by the minute hand, 12 centimeters long in 35 minutes. From 5 to 40 is 35 minutes. Okay, 3, 5 to 3, 40 is 35 minutes. So this is the sector. Okay, this is the sector traced by the minute hand in 35 minutes. So it's very simple to find the area. The, this is the area you'll have to find. This is the area swept by the minute hand in 35 minutes, this area you will have to find. Very easy, we know the formula, no? Theta by 360 into pi r square. And r is 12, r is 12. Then we need theta. What is theta? We don't know. We need to find the sector angle. We need to find the sector angle, that's all. We just have to find the sector angle. Once we find the sector angle, uh, substitute and find the area. Now how to find the sector angle? How to find the sector angle? Now, uh, talk, think only about the minute hand. The minute hand, how long will it uh, take to make one full circle? Okay, now let's take an example. One minute, one minute, one minute. So the minute hand is at... Uh, what's the time now? Let's say uh, three. Okay, so it's uh, it's three o'clock. Okay, say it's three o'clock. It's three. The time is three. Now this minute hand, you know, this minute, this is the minute hand, which is at twelve. This is the minute hand. Now, how long will the minute hand? Okay, when will the minute hand come back to twelve? Now, when now where is the minute hand? Where is the minute hand now at twelve? It's three o'clock. It's three, it's three o'clock, say in the morning, early morning, it's three, three a.m. And the minute uh, hand is at 12. When will the minute hand come back to 12? At what time will the minute hand come back to 12? After 12 hours, 3 p.m. No. No, ma'am, 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock. After 16. Yeah. Okay. The minute hand, the minute hand, when will it come back to 12? At 4 a.m. Now the clock shows 3. It's 3 a.m. Okay, we are all awake at 3 in the morning. So it's it's now 3 a.m. Uh, the hour hand is at 3. The minute hand is at 12. When will the minute hand come back to 12? At 4 a.m. At 4 a.m. At 4 a.m., you know, the R hand will only be at 4. The R hand wouldn't have made a circle. It would have only made a sector. The R hand, the R hand would have only traced a sector, a small sector. The R hand at 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock, it will point to 4. And the, in this uh, duration, the R hand has only traced a small sector on the face of the clock. The minute hand has swept the face of the clock once, has made one complete circle. So how long does it take? 60 minutes. It takes 60 minutes to go 360 degrees. Yes or no, children? Yes. yes. The minute hand takes 60 minutes because from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock, 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. is 60 minutes. 
from 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. is 60 minutes. We are talking only about the minute hand. From 12 to come back to 12, one hour, 60 minutes. In 60 minutes, it goes 360 degrees. So see here, 60 minutes, 360 degrees. 35 minutes, how many degrees? You can do it like this, or you can work it like this. 360 degrees, to go 360 de degrees, it needs 60 minutes. Then how many degrees will it go in 35 minutes? So just make sure that you have the uh, same unit in the same unit in the numerator and denominator. So it should be minutes, degrees or degrees, minutes. Now cross multiply and you can get the degree. You can get, uh, okay, so let's cross multiply. So 60 into X is equal to 35 into 360. So X is equal to 35 into 360 divided by 60. I prefer you do this than using that, you know, multiplying by some fraction. You can do this. So 61, 66, 35 into 6. So 17 to 3, 210 degrees. So this angle is 210 degrees. This angle is 210 degrees to do. You can always use this, uh, you know, this method. To find the sector angle, use the general rule. To find the sector angle, how do you find the sector angle? For the minute hand. So minute hand, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 60 minutes, 360 degrees. For one full circle, it needs, for one full circle, it needs 60 minutes. So write that for the minute hand, minute hand, okay? It needs 60 minutes sir, to go 360 degrees. Then in 35 minutes, how many degrees? Cross multiply and we got X is equal to 210 degrees. So we got the sector angle theta uh, 210 by 360 into pi r square, r is 12. This is for the minute hand. Now supposing the question was for the r hand, r hand, okay? r hand. Then not this information, not 35 minutes. Okay, so some other information, but uh, we have to calculate the uh, sector angle for the R hand. Now R hand, R hand at 3 a.m., where is it? At 3. Now when will the R hand come back to 3? Now it is 3 in the morning. When will the R hand come back to 3? At three, at three, at three p.m. Early morning, three a.m. Then during that day in the afternoon, it will come back to three. The hour hand, because the hour hand will travel slowly. At three o'clock, it will be at three. At four o'clock, it will be at four. Then five o'clock, five. Six o'clock at six. 7 o'clock at 7, 8 o'clock at 8, so it's going slowly. So to come back to 3, it needs 12 hours. So the, uh, the R hand, the R hand, the R hand, it needs 12 hours to go 360 degrees. Because at 3 o'clock, the R hand is at 3. At 4 o'clock, it's just come to 4. At 5 o'clock, from three, it's just come to five. So it's been tracing only sectors. So when will it make one full circle? When it comes back to three at 3 p.m. So it needs 12 hours to go 360 degrees. The same day 3 p.m., not after four days 3 p.m. Now today morning 3 a.m., the same day in the afternoon 3 p.m., it'll come back to three. So it needs 12 hours to go 360 degrees. So supposing, uh, you know, like uh, the hours given in the question is some five hours. In five hours, x degrees. Twelve hours, 360 degrees. Five hours, how many degrees? That will be the sector angle made by the R hand. Or you can use it like this also. 360 degrees, 12 hours. X degrees, how many hours? Oh, sorry, five hours. Let me do it again. I said 360 degrees, 12 hours. X degrees, Five hours. Am I clear, children? How to find the sector angle?
Yes. That's all it is. That's, that's all it is. So I've just used a proportion here. It's the same proportion. This is the same as by no. Is two is the same as by. Now when I say two is to five, don't say that. I Meaning, don't think I explained something else, but I've written something else. It's the same. You can you can just do what I told you earlier. It, when I say two is to five, it, it means two by five. Yeah. So sixty minutes is to three sixty degrees. That is by three sixty degrees. Is as to thirty five minutes is to x degrees. I've just written it as a proportion. 60 minutes is to 360 degrees. If you write minutes, degrees, minutes, degrees. If you write degrees and minutes, it should be degrees and minutes. That order is very important. Then how do you work the proportion? Product of extremes is equal to product of means. 60 into X is equal to 360 into 35. 60 into X is equal to 360 into 35 and find the value of X, 210. Then the sector area is equal to how many if you got 264? Yes, I got this. Very good. Very good. Okay. Yeah, those who want to take a picture. So first we need to find the sector angle. And then the area. Done, children? Yeah, the next one. Uh, find the length of the diagonal of a square whose area is 0 0.5 hectares. Now we need to go back to standard nine and recall the, uh, you know, the relationship between meters and uh, meter square and hectares. So hectare, hectare, Short for hectare is H A, okay? Hectare short is H A. So an area of one hectare is equal to 10,000 meters square. Hectare is not a unit for length. You cannot say that the length of the field is one hectare or the breadth of the field is one hectare. Hectare is a unit for measuring area, not length or breadth. It's, hectare is not one dimensional. You cannot say that the, uh, you know, the length of something is one hectare. Hectare is a unit used for measuring area. One hectare means if I say that I have a field, I have a field uh, which is one hectare. That means my field has an area of 10,000 meters square. 10,000 meters square. 10,000 meters square. So I was just telling the nine standard students also about it. So uh, in the chapter uh, Heron's formula, we have that uh, question where Kamala grows uh, wheat, potatoes, and you know, uh, onions in a triangular field. Okay, so that question we have this conversion. So I was just telling them if you cannot, if you don't understand how much is 10,000 meters square, you can just, uh, you know, ask your parents the floor area of your house, the floor area of the house you live in. Okay, so supposing the floor area of your house is say 80, uh, uh, whatever, 800, whatever, whatever, okay, some say 1000 uh, meter square, it's normally in square feet. It's normally in square feet. So if you can find it in uh, meter square, 
so for example say i as for example you know uh, just for an example say a thousand meters per just for example so 10 times that 10 times that is the area of the uh, field or you can also imagine like this a square okay of side 100 meters so you all know 100 meter running race how long you run 100 meter running race 200 meters 400 meters so you know the distance you cover in a 100 meter running race so that is the length of the field and the breadth of the field so this area is 10000 meters square this area is 10000 meters square it need not be a square uh, field it can be rectangular also it can be rectangular so it can be like 500 meters here like this and uh, how should, how much should it be here 20 huh? 20 meters 500 by 20 500 by 20 is also 10,000 meters square okay so one hectare is 10,000 meters square okay so fine now uh, so we know the uh, area of these uh, square the area of the square is how do you can see again how do you convert one hectare is 10,000 meters square 0 0.5 hectares is x meter square. You can always use this. Write the standard and then write what you want to convert. The standard is one hectare is 10,000 meter square. And you want to convert 0 0.5 hectares. How many meters square? So you know it is 5,000 meter square because it's half. 0.5 meaning half hectare, no? Half a hectare is 5,000 meter square. But you can work it and get 5,000 meter square. So the area of the area of the square field is 5,000 meter square. Area of the square field is 5000 meters squared. You need to find the length of the diagonal. You need to find the length of the diagonal. What's the formula to find the length of the diagonal? Root 2a. Root 2a is equal to 5000. This is the formula to find the length of the diagonal. Root 2a. Length of the diagonal of a square is root 2a units. So root 2a is 5000. When you work this, you will find the uh, you know, uh, value of a value of a or you can use this formula half d square one minute so the area of the square area of the square is 5000 meter square all right so area of the square area of square is equal to 5000 meter square the area of the square, we have another formula. Sorry, I wrote the formula for the diagonal. This is the area of the square. I made a mistake. I wrote root to A. This is the length of the diagonal. This is the area of the square, which is 5000. Area of the square, we have uh, A square, or you can also use half D square. Half D square is also a formula to find the area of the square. Area of the square is 5000 meter square. Area of the square is A square. A square is equal to 5000. You can also use half D square. Half D square is equal to 5000. Half D square is equal to 5000. You can work this and find the value of D. Okay, I have found the side and then found the diagonal root 2A. Okay, take a picture, children. Go through the answer first. So the sector conversion, I told you, if you don't understand why it is multiplied by 1000, you can do this. One hectare, 10,000 meters square. 0 0.5 hectares, x meters square. You can cross multiply and find how much it is in meters square. So area is 5,000, a square. Area means a square. Area of the square is a square is 5,000. So I found a. And then diagonal is root to a. Diagonal is root to a. So root 2 into 50 root 2, which is 100 meters. Or you can directly do this. Okay, so area of square, area of square is equal to 5000 meters square. Another formula to find the area of the square is half D square, half diagonal square, D meaning diagonal. Half D square is equal to 5000. So D square is equal to 5000 into 2. D square is equal to 10,000. 
t is equal to square root of 10,000. t is equal to 100. Directly you can find. All the ways are correct. Done, children? Understand? Yes, How did you got 100? Got 100. Very good. Next one. The perimeter of a sector of a circle of radius 14 centimeters is 68. Find the area of the sector. So see here, perimeter meaning this is a sector. Sector. So radius, radius, length of arc, and this is the central angle, theta. So perimeter is given to be 68. That means R plus R plus L. This is not a quadrant, it's a sector. It's not a quadrant. It's a sector. Okay, so R plus R plus L is equal to L is the length of the arc. L is the length of this arc in the sector, length of arc. Yeah, so you find L is 40. Area of the sector is equal to LR by 2. You can use this formula, LR by 2, because you know L is 40. L is the length of the arc of the sector. L is the length of the arc in the sector. LR by 2, 40 into 14 by 2, 280. What this, children? 280? Um. Yeah. Um, I forgot the formula LR by 2, so I tried using theta by 316 to pi, uh, 2 pi R. Uh, I didn't uh, get the answer. Okay, we'll do it like that. Yeah. Fine. Okay, we'll do it like that. Okay, you can uh, you can use this formula LR by 2, uh, you know, for uh, quicker uh, calculation. Yes. Fine. So now you said L is, uh, you got L is 40, right? So theta by 360 into no, uh, no, 2 no, pi. I didn't know how to find uh, L. Oh, no, no. Uh, I no, no, I didn't get your question. No, no, Ananya, please come from the beginning. Yes, you? ma'am, yes. Uh, I did uh, perimeter uh, equal to R plus R plus theta by 360 into 2 pi R equal to 68. Oh, correct, correct, yeah. That's I what I'm uh, theta in theta equal to 14 to 45 by 11, which came in decimals. Yeah, correct. That's what I'm going to do for you. See here. Okay. See here. L is equal to 40. You will understand. So L is 40. So that means theta by 360 into 2 pi r is equal to 40. Correct? So theta by 360 into 2 into 22 by 7 into 14 is equal to 40. So seven ones are seven twos are. So theta, uh, okay, uh, four nines are thirty-six, and then two eleven forty-five. Yeah. So I'm getting. Uh, theta into eleven. I'm hope I'm right. Theta into eleven divided by forty-five is equal to forty. So theta is equal to. Yeah, 40 into 45 divided by 11. You should just have it like this. You should not find the decimal value. Okay. Okay, so because if this is the final answer, then you should find the decimal value. If this is this is not the final answer, you're going to use this for further calculation. Always, anytime, if this is the final answer, then you have to find the decimal value. This is not the final answer. We're going to use this to find something else. So you can leave it as a fraction like this. Even if you find, supposing the question says find theta, then you will find the decimal value. If the question is find theta, then you'll have to find the decimal value. But don't use the decimal value for further calculation. For further calculation, always use the fraction because the fraction is the precise value. Now, in a fraction like 5 by 2, which is 2.5, you can use 5 by 2 or 2.5 for further calculation because both are accurate. 5 by 2 is exactly 2.5, but in a fraction like 10 by 3, which is 3.33, if you want to use it for further calculation, use 10 by 3. Don't use you don't use 3.33. 
correct all of you yes principal you can find the decimal value you can find the decimal value but if you have to use that value for further calculation if it is uh, if it is a terminating decimal like 2.5 you can use 5 by 2 or 2.5 you will get the same answer but if you are using a decimal value for further calculation which is a non terminating decimal because 3.33 goes on we terminated 3.33 but it's actually a non terminating decimal then don't use this for further calculation use the fraction 10 by 3 it's okay you can find the decimal value 3.33 but don't use 3.33 for further calculation use 10 by 3 to get the precise answer so here you 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 may have found the decimal value for theta but don't use that for further calculation use 14 into 45 or if you have multiplied theta is equal to uh, 90 180 By eleven degrees. So I left it at fourteen to forty-five by eleven. Now I'll uh, try uh, substituting the same value. Yeah, yeah. No, I just want to tell the class also. So now area of the sector, area of the sector is equal to theta, theta by three sixteen to pi r square. So theta is this one. This is theta by three sixty. So it will come here by three sixty into pi r square. So you will get exactly two eighty. You will get exactly two eighty. Got the answer, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, good. So all of you remember, if you're carrying for, if you're carrying for forward a particular value for further calculation, use the exact value. If the decimal value is an exact value, then you can use it. Otherwise, use the fraction. Do not use a decimal because you will not get two eighty. Then you will get approximately some value. You will not get exactly two eighty. Okay. However, for uh, uh, you know, like the answer, you can use this formula L R by two to save time. You can use this formula L R by two square units, where L is the length of the arc in that sector. You are finding the area of this sector, right? What is L? The length of the arc in this sector, not the length of arc of something else. You have to find the area of this sector. Then L is the length of the arc of this sector. This is the length of arc. The arc which is in that sector. Done, children. Yeah. What's the sector angle? Yeah. What's the sector angle? In. Okay, oh, that's what my question is. What is the measure of the sector angle AOB? So some of you worked it right. Please share your answer. What is the measure of the sector angle AOB? Okay, I think you've not got it. Okay, this is also very very important. Okay, so very important to. Know how to calculate circle, chord. Remember trigonometry. Okay, trigonometry is trigonometry will be so handy in finding the unknown parts of a triangle, be it an angle or side. Okay, uh, AB the length of the uh, chord AB is eight root three. This is eight root three, and uh, center O. Okay, radius is eight. Radius is eight. Okay. Now drop a perpendicular. Drop a perpendicular. Say M O M. Now these two triangles are congruent to each other. I've told you this once earlier. So these two triangles are congruent to each other. So A M will be equal to M B. So M B is four root three. M B is four root three. Four root three. Four root three. Eight root three. No. So it will become four root three. Four root three. A M is four root three. M B is four root three. Now we need to find this angle. This sector angle. This angle. This angle we need to find. Okay, so what we do? CPCT we know that because the two triangles are congruent, because this triangle is congruent to this triangle, this angle is equal to this angle. 
TPCT, this angle is equal to this angle. So if I find this angle, double will be the whole angle because they're equal. Because they're equal. So now let's find this angle. Let's take up this triangle AOB in triangle AOB in triangle AOB. Let's find the measure of angle AOB. Okay, using four root three and eight. So sine sine of angle AOB. Oh, not AOB. Sorry, MOB. MOB sine of angle MOB. In oh my God, not AOB. One second. In triangle MOB. In triangle MOB. In triangle MOB. Angle sine of angle MOB is equal to opposite MB by hypotenuse OB. So sine of angle MOB is equal to MB 4 root 3 by OB 8. So sine of angle MOB is equal to um, root 3 by 2 on simplifying. So sine of angle MOB is equal to root 3 by 2 sine 60 degrees. So theta is equal to 60 degrees. That is angle MOB. Angle MOB is equal to 60 degrees. So MOB is 60, but MOB is equal to uh, AOM. So this is also 60. CPCT, the two triangles are congruent. So the sector angle AOB is 120 degrees. 120 degrees. All right, children. Yeah, go through this. Understood, children? Yes. So if you have not completed, you have to take a picture. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Find the area of the largest triangle that can be inscribed in a semicircle of radius R. What's the answer? Those who have tried, what's the answer? R square. R square. Ram. Huh? S square. Very good. R squared. Correct. Yeah, please uh, see the answer and understand. Semicircle. Largest uh, triangle that can be inscribed in a semicircle. So the largest triangle should have the maximum base and maximum height, correct? The largest triangle in a semicircle should have the maximum base and maximum height. Here, semicircle. Which is the maximum base in a semicircle? This one. Diameter is the largest, you know, that, that's, a, that's the biggest chord, right? So if the triangle, this can be the longest side. And uh, the long, see, it should have the longest base and the longest altitude. And the altitude, the radius will be the long, the maximum altitude. Radius, because I hope you understand. Radius will be the longest altitude. So this is the triangle. So this is the triangle with the a maximum base and maximum altitude. This is the triangle in the semicircle with the longest base and maximum altitude. See, I can show you other triangles. I can show you other triangles. See here with this base, you know, you can draw a triangle like this. Like this, but this will be the height. This will be the height. Definitely this height will be less than the radius. This will this is the maximum height. Which is the radius. So if you take a triangle like this, you know, if you take a triangle like this. If you take a triangle like this on the same base AB, 
on the same base ab but if you take a triangle like this the altitude will be this one so you understand right half base into height it will not give you the maximum uh, area biggest area you cannot get i'm clear children yes okay so you can see there how do we calculate the area of the triangle half base into height half into base ab which is 2r into height which is r so r square square units that's the area of the largest triangle that can be inscribed in a semicircle of radius r so if somebody asks you why you can tell them that see if you take a triangle like this if you take a triangle like this its height will be this one which will definitely be less than the radius which will definitely be less than the length of the radius done children take a screenshot if you have not uh, completed this yeah and uh, rajeshwari uh, uh, you were telling me that uh, you did not get the answers for a few sums no some others also told me but i remember rajeshwari telling me is it all clear now rajeshwari yes ma'am okay uh and uh, uh, uh thank you ananya for that question uh, you said you got a fraction for theta and uh, you did not know how to proceed so that was really useful for the class because uh, that situation is quite common uh you know we get a fraction whose value is a non terminating decimal so now we understand that we should not carry forward that non terminating decimal for further calculation we should always use a fraction which is the exact value so thanks to ananya for that and yes raja rajeshwari you sure you understood any questions you have yes ma'am it's clear now ma very good others all right clear good all right yeah now i want you to take pictures of this you stay in the meeting you're not leaving the meeting i want you to first uh, you know uh, understand go through go through understand as much as possible and work this out i'll give you uh, it's a time now 922 okay maybe i'll uh, give you three questions <clears throat> take a picture of this one children done yes ma'am now take a picture done children done children yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah take a picture Yeah, take a picture. Done, children. Yes, ma'am. Let me see how much I have in this file. But that's all. This is rep repeated. Okay. This one is over. Is this over, children? Yes, ma'am. Yeah.
this one we have done earlier children so i leave it to you uh, if you want to practice by working again you can do it this we have already uh, understood take a picture anyways Uh, I've done this in two ways, uh, children. That is, what is, what are the two ways? Uh, the two ways are the two ways of finding the uh, angle, the sector angle. Okay, the two ways of finding the sector angle. That's the only difference. Otherwise, it's the same. The answers are the same. Uh, the way we find the sector angle. So this is this part is important. Please uh, concentrate on this. And here I've uh, found the uh, sector angle using Pythagoras theorem. Actually, we don't need the construction here. We don't need this construction here. One moment. We don't need that. Yeah, it's only about, uh, you know, otherwise the calculation is the same. How to find the sector angle? How to find the sector angle? So here I've used uh, the converse of Pythagoras theorem, which may not always be helpful. Only if the sector angle is 90, you can use this. So this one is not always uh, helpful. You should know this method. And we have not done it like this. I explained this. I explained this. Maybe you can work the sum for the sake of this part. So construction uh, on then these two triangles are congruent. Then we take up this triangle, you know, and uh, we have to find this angle. We just did it some time back now in this class. So we have to find this angle. So this angle is 45 degrees. So since uh, these two angles are equal, 45 into 290. Very very important. So. You should make a question and answer out of this. So the question is, uh, how do we find the uh, sector angle? Sometimes the sector angle is not given. How do we find the sector angle? So the answer is using trigonometry. That's all. The answer is using trigonometry. Finished. Question is, uh, in this chapter, areas related to circles, sometimes the sector angle is not given. How do we find the sector angle? Answer, using trigonometry. Finished. So that explains everything. Using trigonometry means you need a right triangle. So then you have to do the construction. Construction ON perpendicular to AB. Then these two triangles are congruent to each other. So AN is equal to BN and this angle is equal to this angle. Then use this right triangle. Use this right triangle and find this angle. Double it to get the full angle. All that you will be able to do. You should just need that idea. How to find using trigonometry? The rest your mind will, uh, you know, like reproduce. It will tell you what you have to do. But that idea that it is uh, using trigonometry should occur to you. So simple things you must remember like that, and that you know, uh, number of revolutions, distance covered. That also that main that formula. That's very important. And other, the other thing is. Um, uh, you know, uh, everything should be in the same unit. When you find the distance covered and, you know, the circumference, all that should be in the same unit. That's very important. And then perimeter of a sector, you know, perimeter of a sector, sometimes we mistake only this one to be the perimeter of the sector. Only the length of the arc to be the perimeter of the sector, sometimes. Perimeter of the sector, we think only the length of the arc is the perimeter of the sector. No. This is only the length of perimeter is always the length of the boundary. So R plus R plus L is the perimeter. It's not only L. R plus R plus L is the perimeter. And L is theta by 360 into 2 pi R. Into 2 pi R. So this is perimeter. Perimeter of a sector is R plus R plus L. Perimeter of a quadrant, this is a quadrant. Radius, radius, and this one is 2 pi r by 4. 2 pi r by 4. So all these little things you must you know register carefully.
yeah children so yeah this is the next one again the idea here is very very important Please, I repeat, uh, I know all of you are very responsible children. It's not about just copying it in your notebook. Please go through the answers. Go through one answer, understand that as much as you can. Work it. Then go to the next one. I'll explain all this in the next class, so it will be more clear to you. You would have understood most of it. So then little thing I tell you in the class, it will become very clear. That's all, children. So I think I'll do one thing. It's 9.30. Uh, okay, let me put you with the test. Now let this, keep this aside, children. Keep this one aside. All right. Uh, you have to complete all this by the next class. All the screenshots which you have taken, you should complete it by the next class. Is that possible? Possible or impossible? Okay, don't forget very important questions, all of them. Okay. Uh, let me just ask you some questions for the rest of the time. Don't forget to complete all this in your notebook, children. Okay, now you should be quick to answer, okay? You must be quick to answer. Yeah, without calculating, what's the angle? Sixty degrees. Very degree. good. Sixty degrees. Very good. Okay, so sector, sorry, circle, uh, sector, minus sector. This is the chord in the minus sector. Okay. So the length of the chord is the same as the radius. So this is the radius. The length of the chord is also the same as the radius. So that means it's an equilateral triangle. So the angle in the sector is 60 degrees. In fact, everything is 60, 60, 60. Very good. Harini or Sneha? Who is that? Harini. Harini. Okay, very good. Okay, let me show you again. Circle, circle, minor sector. Okay, minor sector. Chord in the uh, sector. Okay, so this is the chord in the sector. O, A, B. All right, this is the chord in the sector. Now, the length of the chord, this is the chord, A, B is the chord. The length of the chord is the same as the radius. So, radius is R. Here, this is R, this is R. This is also R. That means it's an equilateral triangle. All the three sides are equal. So, the sector angle will be 60 degrees. Yes or no, children? Understand? Yes. Yeah, so if you have a situation like this, you know, uh, where uh, the length of the chord is, say, some 15 centimeters, radius is also 15. 
So the sector angle will not be given. The sector angle will not be given. And you don't have to find it using trigonometry. If you find it using trigonometry, you will get 30 degrees here. You will get 30 degrees here and double it will be 60. But you don't have to spend that time. You don't have to spend that time because it's an equilateral triangle. So the angle will be 60 degrees. See, every time the sector angle is missing, you can find it using trigonometry. Every time the sector angle is missing, you can find it using trigonometry. If it is 90 degrees, you can use converse of Pythagoras theorem. But how do you know it is 90 degrees? If you can make out, yes, you can use the converse of Pythagoras theorem. Otherwise, you can always use trigonometry. Now, in this case, where all the three sides of the triangle are equal, it is equilateral. So the angle is 60 degrees. So you don't have to work at all. You don't have to use trigonometry. Even if you work with trigonometry, you will get this angle is 30 degrees. So double 60 degrees. Clear, children? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so this you should remember, see? Okay. Now quickly find the uh, sector angle. Yeah, fine, Theta. No guessing. I know the answer can be 60, 90, or 120. Now, don't guess and say one of the, uh, don't guess like it can't be 60, uh, 90 also not possible, so it's 120. No, please work and tell me. Please use trigonometry and tell me. How much is it 60? Theta. How much is theta? Theta is not 60. Theta cannot be 60. One twenty. Yes. Very good. One twenty. Yes. So, children, construction ninety degrees. So, how much is this one? How much is MB? Twenty one root three. Twenty one root three. A B this is M. This is forty two. This is O. This is twenty one root three, half of it. So we have to find this portion. So it is what? Sine of angle M O B, right? Is equal to which is the opposite side? MB by, MB by OB. So sine of angle MOB is equal to 21 root 3 by 42, which will be 21 root 3 by 42 will be root 3 by 2. So sine 60 degrees. So angle MOB is equal to 60 degrees. This is 60. So this is 60. So the whole angle will be 16 to 2, 120 degrees. Okay. Try this. A wheel of a cart makes 
six revolutions. Write on the question, six revolutions per second. If the diameter, if the diameter of the wheel, of the wheel is 42 centimeters, find the speed of the cart. Find the speed of the cart. Yeah. Use that formula. Yeah, with this, we'll wind up the session for today. Please work this. To find the speed, you need two things. Distance and time. Distance and time. That's all. That's the clue. First of all, if you find the distance, uh, children, the wheel of the cart makes six revolutions. It goes six revolutions. One, two, three, four, five, and six revolutions. Okay. So what is the distance covered in one revolution? Two pi r. One revolution is two pi r. So six revolutions, two pi r into six. Find that and tell me the answer. 792, ma'am. 792. Okay. So, so the distance covered in six revolutions. Distance covered in six revolutions is equal to 2 pi r in one revolution into six. So, how much is it? 792. What's the unit? Centimeter. Because uh, the radius is in centimeter, right? Okay, so it's centimeter because the radius is in centimeter. So 292 centimeters. Now tell me, children, this distance, uh, sorry, not two, 792 centimeter. This distance, 792 centimeter, is covered in what time? Okay, six revolutions is covered in what time? Per second, ma'am. Ah, six revolutions is gone in one second. That means 792 centimeters. That distance is gone in one second, right? Is covered in one second, correct? Yes, ma'am. See, it's in the question. A wheel of the car. See, to find the speed, you need distance and time. To find the speed of any vehicle or the speed of this cart, you need distance and time. Distance and time. So distance, how do you find the distance? Distance covered in one revolution into number of revolutions. So 2 pi r into 6, 792 centimeters. That's a distance. Now this distance is covered in what time? Six revolutions is covered in one second. So 792 centimeters is covered in one second. So the speed is 792 centimeters per second. Because distance by time, no? Distance is 792 centimeters. Time is one second. So seven, nine, seven, my God, I've been reading this incorrectly. Is this is the correct value? What I've written, 720, 792? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So speed is equal to distance by time. Distance is 792 centimeter by time, one second. 792 by 1 is 792 centimeter per second. See, if you, supposing, okay, you, you go on your bicycle, you can cover, say, uh, some 10 kilometers in one hour. Okay, 10 kilometers in one hour. You are able to go 10 kilometers in one hour in your on your bicycle. That means your speed is 10 kilometers per hour.
Yeah. So if you are able to go ten or cover ten kilometers on your bicycle in one hour, that means your speed is ten kilometers per hour. Is this understood, children? Yes, ma'am. Now, supposing you go. Now, tell me your speed. Tell me your speed, children. You go seven and a half uh, kilometers in uh, fifteen minutes. Then, what's your speed? Without using the formula, tell me the answer quickly. Fifteen minutes, seven and a half kilometers. So, in sixteen minutes, uh, how many kilometers you will go? Seven and a half kilometers in fifteen minutes. In thirty minutes, how much you will cover? Fifteen. In another thirty minutes, another fifteen. No. Thirty. So yeah. So what's the distance you will cover in sixty minutes? Thirty. Thirty kilometers. Thirty kilometers you have covered in sixty minutes. That is one hour. So your speed is thirty kilometers per hour. Thirty kilometers per hour. Understand what speed is? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, children. So you have to find uh, the distance, and then that distance is covered in one second. So that's only the speed, seven ninety two centimeter per second. If they specify that you'll have to convert the speed to kilometer per hour or you know meter per second, then you'll have to do that. Nothing is mentioned, so you can leave it with seven ninety two uh, centimeters per second. All right. Yes, ma'am. All right, children. Uh, so please complete this answer. This wheel of the cart. I hope all of you wrote the question. All right. Class, use the emoji. Raise your hand. Ramnathan, Sashmin, Ananya, Harini, Sneha, Rajeshwari. Raja Rajeshwari, Tarun. Okay, all right, all right, children. Uh, so that's it for uh, today's session. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Good night.